like to come to our guest for us in the home. Um, I would like to ask you, you know, as much as the West Asia war has influenced West Asia as a whole, it has influenced the U.S. election as well. Now that the, the trends are trickling in, how do you gauge? sure that it's affected the American election, honestly. I think that in all the surveys that we see, the Israel issue is way down on the list of why an American voter would vote for this side or that side. I think in America, it always is and always has been about the economy. And the economy in the last year, in the last couple of years, has not been moving forward. Mm -hmm. Inflation has been high. People feel it in their supermarket bills, etc. And that's what people are voting for. Honestly, I, you know, mm. however important we like to think we are here on West Asia, it's, uh, it's not, mm. I don't think it's a huge electoral issue. Uh, Ms. Naum, just uh, to uh, expand on that further, you said that this perhaps did not affect the U.S. election on the scale that was probably expected. Uh, when we talk about the blue wall states, particularly when we talk about Michigan, mm. it is home to a large Arab American population, especially Detroit a huge a voter base that is. Now when we talk about the policies of both the presidential candidates, Kamala Harris sort of struggled to really give a yes. detailed plan on how she would plan to go about this. Donald Trump on the other hand has been reiterating Fair. that he will end all the wars the day he Absolutely. is in office. No plan there but he's been very brazen mm. in his uh, campaign pitch at least. Right now from what we see in the early trends Michigan is in the red. Do you think that will have any sort of a bearing? And what would the next U.S. president mean for the conflict in West Asia? I think that w when you look at Trump's deeds rather than his words, you look at his last administration as, you know, the most peaceful in terms of no wars. And I can tell you why. It's because people fear Trump in, in, in the Middle East. People, uh, Iran, uh, specifically the Islamic Republic of Iran, they understand that you can't mess with somebody who you can't predict what he's going to do. And because Trump is a figure that you can't predict what he's going to do, you don't mess around with that. So in the four years that Trump managed to do maximum pressure on the Islamic Republic of Iran, he was almost choking the regime. Mm. And that is seen very positively by the moderate Sunni Arab countries of this region, as well as Israel, because you can put a lipstick on a pig. It you cannot, you cannot take the Iranian Republic and try and make it into a peaceful country when it's subjugating its own people. We want to talk about women's rights. Look at what they're doing in the Islamic Republic of Iran to women. Mm -hmm. Somehow, it seems that the progressive liberals don't really care so much about the women in Iran, because if they did, they would want a leader that the Iranians fear. And all we're seeing right now is that the attempts on Donald Trump's life, one of them at least, had something to do with the Islamic Republic of Iran. And if Iran don't want Donald Trump, ask yourself why. Right. Now, let me bring in our correspondent as well. We just heard our guest talking about how this whole thing has influenced um, Israel. Now, you've been keeping track. You've been asking Israelis on ground about the U.S. elections, Jody. Um, what are you gathering now from the people now that the, the, the results seem to be trickling in? but I'm going to talk about the reaction in Israel to the elections. Mm. Um, commentators are suggesting that, you know, this is a mostly right-wing government in Israel and that they would naturally fit better with the Republican presidency. However, the Israeli government has made clear that it would continue to work closely with whoever becomes the next president. And obviously, the results are still coming in, but um, the indications are that it could be Donald Trump uh, winning. Now, Daniel Hagari, who's the IDF spokesperson, has said that coordination between Israel and the United States at this stage during this war has been without precedent. But we know that coordination was also very high under Donald Trump when he was president. And a recent poll showed that 66% of Israelis would prefer to see Donald Trump win the election, with 17% um, who would say that they would vote for Harris if they could, and 17% undecided. 
And the poll delves deeper and really shows that the reason behind that support for Trump is because of the Abraham Accords, which were the first normalization agreements between Israel and Arab and Muslim states in 30 years. And because of his recogni recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, which is seen as particularly important for Israel's security and also the move of the US embassy to Jerusalem. But of course, it, we have to wait a little bit longer for the final results to come in. Right, and, and it's really interesting. So I would like to come to our guest now. Um, let's also take your, your reaction into this latest news that we are picking up that Netanyahu has sacked his defense minister and now he's brought in Israel Katz. Uh, what do you reckon of that? All that is actually, we have momentum in it at the moment. I think people in Israel are very upset, but I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, that Netanyahu did that last night. I think people, I think he rightly predicted that people would be busy with talking about this election and wouldn't have the same type of upheaval that there was the last time he tried to sack uh, Yoav Gallant. I think there's a lot of very upset people. I think there's good reason for that. Um, let's see what happens. Israel Katz is not seen as a military figure. And normally, traditionally in this country, defense ministers were previous chiefs of staff, or at least people who were very high up in the military establishment. And it's not the case. Um, and we'll see. And the question is, does it matter? Does it mean now that Netanyahu is going to be running uh, the war all on his own? Uh, that's that's a question to be seen over the next few weeks. And do you think this was a conscious choice? Because like he, like previously, whenever Netanyahu was asked about the elections, he was like, well, let me see the results and then take an action. Well, I think uh, by last night, he must have had intelligence that uh, Trump was winning. I think that what, what these elections show is really the bias of the mainstream media, especially in America. Um, there are a lot of very smart pollsters saying already for a few weeks that Trump was going to win this, uh, that it wasn't going to be as close as people think. But, uh, you know, people live in this cognitive dissonance and the mainstream media want to uh, these days make the news rather than report the news. And so this is what you get. People completely surprised by the result uh, when a lot of smart people already knew for a number of weeks that this is what was going to happen. Uh, all right, Ms. Naum, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jody, thank you so much for bringing us the latest from Ranana as well. It's been a pleasure speaking to the both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.